and 16. Are you there yet? Is that something that no, you... No, I'm, I'm nowhere near there yet right now. Um, I haven't even thought about it too much. Obviously, I know what's going on and when it's happening, but um, I haven't decided. Your, uh, your show, Survivor's Remorse, comes out on Saturday. Uh, at, at the premiere in Cleveland, what was that like for you to see your name up on the big screen? Producer LeBron James. Um... Well, it's a venture that, that my team um, and I, you know, uh, I got a great team of Maverick Carter and Tom Warner. And, uh, you know, those guys were able to put this put together something great. And, uh, you know, it is great to see the finished product. Um, we continue to say it's for adults only. And, uh, uh, you know, parental discretion is advised, uh, you know, for sure. It's not for kids, but, you know, it's a great show. And we have to be able to put together something for it. I was there. I, I mean, we saw the first couple of episodes, and it absolutely is comedy, you can tell. But some of the subject matters are, I guess, on parallel with some of the things that have been happening in the NFL lately and in the NBA. Yeah, like it's weird guys. because, uh, you know, we shot the show in, in March, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the current events is happening right now. So people will see it and be like, oh, they bit right off of what's going on right now when actually if you know to take make a show it takes months and months in advance we actually did a reading in january so um it's it's crazy that you know we, we did a show so far long ago and uh it's coming out now and it's current events that's going on when, when you went to miami there was so much dislike from you guys that first year it doesn't seem to be that with this team why do you why do you think this one's different um i don't know um you know People are just excited, I guess, about the game of basketball, about me returning home. Um, it's a new day, it's a new age, and uh, you know, time heals all. You were able to bring Mike, Sean, all these guys with you. That was always a problem the first time. You couldn't, you guys weren't coming here. Why? Why now? Why is this working now? Why are these guys coming out? Uh, I guess I had to prove that I could win a championship. You know, I was able to do that twice. Hey, LeBron, how would you describe this offense after Tishman for three days? Um, it's very free flowing, um, but it's you know it, it's it's going to be challenging for the guys. I can see it. You know, guys are kind of thinking through it a little bit too much, but I think when we get it, it's so many different options, man. It's um, it's live at every position, and uh, everyone there's a counter to everything your defense can do. Um, so, you know, the more and more we practice it, the more and more we get a great feel for it. we we able to read and react and, and kind of not think about the, the certain set that we in. Have you ever played in an offense? Like no, I um, probably I'll go back to my high school days. Um, you know, it was the last time I played in a system like this. Um, it's very challenging mentally, you know, and, uh, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, come up the floor and, you know, free flowing offense. You, it's a lot of reading, reacting, and, and knowing where your guys are on the floor. LeBron, is that something the NBA has not seen before? Is this going to be different? Or? Well, I mean, I think um, we've, we've seen a, a similar, similar approach to this kind of offense. If, if, you know, kind of the Princeton, people always say the Princeton when you have four guys kind of lifted above the free throw line. And I know uh, Eddie Jordan and Washington, they used to run it a lot when we used to play them back in the day. So, uh, and a lot of teams have kind of played it in the past, but um, there's a lot more options to this than, than, I'm, than I'm used to seeing, you know, from uh, the actions Eddie Jordan used to run. LeBron, not just the offense, but everything so far after a few days, are you liking what you're seeing? Well, yeah, I mean, what's not to like? I mean, we have a lot of talent. We have guys that want to learn and we have guys that want to work. You know, so that's um, that's the key. Anybody surprise you? Does it stand out? Well, I mean, I think everyone. I'm, I mean, guys. I think the best guys came in, in, in ready in shape, in game shape, and ready to practice. I mean, obviously, you know, we use training camp to get to tip top shape, but everyone has come in mentally ready to get going right away and not waste any days. LeBron, can you talk about Wednesday night, the whining goat scrimmage? What that's going to mean to you to be back in the queue and in the Cavs uniform with the fans there behind you and scrimmaging against you? Uh, well, I mean, it's another day for us to learn. You know, we're going to use that day to learn. Um, you know, we don't have everything in our package, but, you know, to be on the home floor in front of our fans is always a great thing. LeBron, I know in his last two years in Miami, he really went through a lot of injury problems. He got healthy last year. I mean, you see a difference in him now. I mean, it seems like he's fully healthy. And yeah, he is fully healthy. And uh, if I told you he was the only player on the Memphis Grizzlies last year to play all 82 games in the regular season, you think I'm lying. Well, I'm actually not. Um, you know, so it just showed how healthy he was last year, and uh, he meant a lot to that team last year, shooting the ball. Well, you your relationship with, with Mike? Uh, I don't know. We're as close as teammates than uh, any of I've had in my career. I mean, we've, I've always wanted to play alongside of him, and then we went through some, you know, when you go through 
tough times in in, in, a, in an NBA you know season, you you kind of get to get to know each other even more beyond the game of basketball. So, you know, spending a year in Miami, our first year, you know, going through what we went through that year, and then winning back to back championships and, and going through what we did in those years too. Uh, we're, we're very close, and that's also with James Jones as well. You know, we've been through it all. Brian, I know it's a fan vote, but are you kind of happy and relieved to go back to number 23? And would you have done it anyway? Nah, I let the fans pick, actually. And, uh, you know, I let my kids, my kids kind of run my house and run everything that I do these days. <laughs> I really don't have too much say so. So uh, they was like, we would like to see you in 23. And it was between the fans and my kids, it was over with. Did you just kind of assume your days with Mike were over? Um, yeah, yeah, I did um, because I didn't think about playing for another team at the time. And I know once you amnesty a player, you can't come back. You know, so I did think those days was over. Were you involved in the Patterson Park thing last week? Was I involved? No, I know, I know you. Were. Oh, oh. But, but I mean, um, was that a park that you grew up in? Yeah, I, I grew up not too far away from that park, and it was one of the courts that I played on as a kid. Yeah. So just, I mean, you've done things like this before, but anytime you can be involved, I imagine it's something you can do. Anytime I can be involved in giving back to the community and giving back to the youth and, and, and people that don't have as much is always uh, uplifting for me. It's always uh, inspiring for me. And, you know, I inspire them, but when I'm able to do something like that for them, they inspire me. So I'm always gratif you know, it's always a, a gratification when you know, do something like that.